So, Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. That's great, but I think we all expected that. As much as I'd love to be another D&D player praising Baldur's Gate, I think it's time we consider the games that didn't quite get the attention they deserved. 2023 was a year of amazing games, but here's seven that you missed and deserve your attention. And for those who stick around, the last game is not only my personal game of the year, but a strong contender for the best game of all time. Let's start with RoboQuest. Blasting through torrents of enemies feels incredible incredibly satisfying, with an equipped arsenal ready to pulverize any foe stupid enough to get in your way. This game makes you feel like an absolute badass. As you traverse the procedural levels, you'll slide along rails and rain headshots on enemies. Single or multiplayer, you will be able to live in a comic book, with the ratatat to go along with the fast-paced and graphic gameplay. Roguelikes tend to be difficult, and this is no different. Your skills in first-person combat will be vital to ensuring your first win, as the difficulty can spike up incredibly quickly through the first stages, but the game offers plenty of options to better yourself through meta progression. Item unlocks feel genuinely rewarding, and every unsuccessful run provides you with enough meta currency to build your skill set and get further next run. And, much like many of the other roguelikes on this list, build variety is plentiful. Your equipment can vary greatly each run, determining the effects you inflict on your enemies and the way you navigate the levels. It's immensely satisfying to play and deserves recognition for taking the formula Gunfire Reborn popularized and adding faster and more stylized gameplay. Now, to completely change the pace, we have Dot Age, the top down resource management game that. Wait, 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 don't go! I will admit that I find turn based strategy games so boring in comparison to a dopamine pumped FPS like RoboQuest. However, I make a few exceptions, and Dot Age is one of them, and here's why. It is so absurdly addictive. Despite runs themselves lasting for a long period of time, each turn is completed so quickly and succinctly that it's hard to convince yourself against having just one more turn. Seriously, this is so addictive, and that's coming from someone who despises the monotony and head bashing that often happens with strategy games. The reason it manages to make each turn feel so easy is precisely because of the long run duration. Screwing up in a game like FTL means you have lost all your progress and you're likely going to crash and burn, but screwing up in Dot Age is far less detrimental. It's certainly not inconsequential, but it adds a layer of problem solving such that you're not only playing to wade off the evil omens, but to protect your town from the next stupid decision you make. Plus, there is an absurd amount of content in this game. You can do a run and only see a fraction of what has to offer. If you're the kind of person who likes sinking their teeth into a game, Dot Age is absolutely perfect. As a strategy game, it only has one competitor who beats it, in my opinion. Okay, so you probably haven't missed Brotato, but you mightn't have played it yet. This is a reminder to do so. Brotato, easy, knocks vampire survivors out of the park when it comes to value for money, player agency, and sheer content. Solo developed by Thomas Brush, even the demo of this game offers drastically more content than any other game at this price. It follows the typical bullet heaven conventions with the possibility for incredibly chaotic builds. However, it has a different style of collecting these items. Rather than getting just XP, you also get a currency that persists between each round. You then use this to buy the items you encounter in the shop, adding a new layer of strategy and player agency to your runs. This is then compounded by this huge stats panel on the right, so you can easily see what stats you can sacrifice for damage. The runs themselves never persist too long, and are finished after less than 30 minutes. There's an absurd amount of content in Brotato, from the different items to characters to difficulties, they all offer something unique and innovative. Brotato remains the perfect foundation for an ingenious developer to build the most jam-packed bullet heaven game, and it is absolutely absolutely a must play of 2023. And now, from a game with heaps of content to a game with relatively little, Trouble Juice doesn't try to be anything it isn't. It's a game with sick visuals, satisfying combat, and simple gameplay. You move left to right in this world full of odd creatures and the occasional boss. As you progress, you grow stronger in typical roguelike fashion. The platforming feels incredibly loose and fluid, which makes taking down your foes relatively straightforward. In addition, each individual screen wraps around, which means you can make some cool plays, navigating from the left to the right to avoid enemy gunfire. Although it's not overly complex, it's certainly not attempting to be, and for what it is, it's a perfect little package with an incredibly low asking price. The game has really flown under the radar, and it deserves far more attention than it's received. At one point, Voidio was a strong contender for Game of the Year for me, and for a good reason. This game is absolutely brilliant. So much passion and love were poured into this game, and it is so incredibly apparent while playing. There's a huge amount 
amount of character and an impeccable style in the game that amplifies the intuitive top-down roguelike in a way that few recent games can. Clearly inspired by the likes of Nuclear Throne and Enter the Gungeon, this game manages to exist on a tier that arguably lies above the two who inspired it. You'll discover a ton of weapons, the huge bounty clearly inspired by Enter the Gungeon, and a huge amount of potentially synergetic items. And rather than feeling like a player in a game, you feel like a character in a rich and vibrant environment, with a huge amount of hidden areas and a massive boss chasing you down like the prey you are. I seriously can't emphasize how much this game manages to pack into the experience, and although it is popular within the roguelike community, its ingenuity easily warrants more mainstream popularity. And my personal game of the year? Nah, I'm kidding. Bug TDX is a game I developed and released in the first half of the year. Being my first commercial project, it manages to embody many problems apparent in one's first release. But what lies beneath the terrible pixel art is a coherent and unique blend of tower defense and auto battler gameplay that has no right to be as intuitive as it is. This game is absurdly cheap and even cheaper on discount, but it offers over 40 towers to play and experiment with. The foundation of the gameplay is so solid that I've begun working on a remaster that will improve pretty much every aspect of Bug TDX. It's called Fish TDX and wishlisting it is an enormous support to development. You'll get to know when it releases for a launch discount and it will also make Steam push the game that little bit further which helps immensely. Now here is my actual game of the year. Drum roll please. Drum roll please. That's your drum roll. When a tempo isn't specified, any reasonable person would default to Lento. Luck be a landlord. I know it looks kind of underwhelming, but under the hood, it is one of the best strategy games that I have ever played. You play as a tenant who's running low on coin and has decided to game away their savings in the hopes of paying their rent. But instead of the purely luck-based slot machines, you will choose the items that go into your slots. So many items interact with each other to add many layers of depth and strategy to each choice. As you can imagine, played by a skilled player, the game can quickly spiral into garnering you millions and even billions of coins each spin by creating exponentially powerful synergies that break the game with ease. It's also available on iOS, which is where most of my time in the game was spent. Absolutely perfect for public transport, waiting in lines, and pretty much any spare five minutes you might have. Plus, as you get better at the game, you'll unlock harder difficulties that introduce entirely new game mechanics, like the self-destructive essences or the ability to make sure your landlord never charges you rent again. A lot of these games might not suit you, but I'd recommend at least chucking them on the wish list. When enormous games like Baldur's Gate take the Steam marketplace by storm, it often means other quality games fall far under the radar. Hopefully you've discovered a game you haven't heard of before, and I can absolutely assure you that these games will offer you some of the best game experiences of the year. Like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.